Theoretical condensed matter physics is actually a very broad field. And uh, we work uh, on problems associated with the electronic structure of materials. Um, in that sense, uh, we uh, try to understand uh, uh, the effect of electron-electron interactions on various properties of the materials. And uh, for instance, the uh, optimal atomic configurations and the uh, electronic properties that you see in semiconductors and metals. Uh, maybe some dynamical problems uh, in terms of phase transitions too. Okay, because when you look at the uh, um, amount of solids, uh, normally you're going to see only the atoms. What you don't see are actually the electrons uh, surrounding those uh, uh, nuclei. Uh, they are playing a very important role in holding the whole thing together and in giving uh, very special properties of those materials. So, and they are complicated objects because they interact uh, actually quite strongly with each other and there are so many of them. Uh, they obey quantum mechanics, which is uh, uh, something that we use to describe very uh, uh, small worlds, like this, so we go down to this atomic level, we need to worry about that. So uh, even though we know the fundamental physics there, but the fact that there are so many particles there uh, makes this study very difficult. That's where the computational efforts come in, because we need to use supercomputers to help us resolve, to solve those uh, equations in order to get uh, some uh, description of the properties of the materials. We uh, would like to uh, explain um, experimental findings um, of some novel materials properties and also trying to uh, predict those properties from our uh, calculations. And we try to uh, start the calculation from first principles. That means to go down to the basic equations. And then uh, it's kind of a universal for all sorts of materials. And uh, we, so we could attack different uh, problems. And currently, uh, we have a few projects. Um, we are studying the, uh, the hydrogen storage problem uh, in solid state, that is, we, I mean, for hydrogen to be an energy carrier, uh, we need to have a, a good way to store them and so that we can use them when we need them. Uh, and to uh, put hydrogen atoms in a solid state system is something that uh, people think that's very promising instead of carrying those high pressure hydrogen gas tank in your car. Uh, but there are a lot of materials issues one have to, has to resolve first before we could find the optimal materials and know those properties. So we're using our computer uh, simulations to search uh, for those materials and also to understand uh, the, uh, some of the pricing, pro, uh, promising materials and their properties. Uh, that's one of our uh, current projects. Uh, also, we are studying uh, some new uh, electronic materials. Uh, Georgia Tech has a new uh, materials research center funded by the National Science Foundation. Uh, it's a so-called MERS Act on um, um, graphing electronics. Um, we have experimental groups here uh, growing uh, the samples and uh, a couple of uh, uh, theoreticians here are doing the uh, studies of the simulation, trying to understand the, uh, the materials and the growth phenomenon associated with that uh, new material. In addition, uh, we um, have other, uh, some projects for um, a couple of nanostructures. For instance, we um, uh, ha have been studying uh, semiconductor nanowires, which is some kind of one-dimensional nanostructure and uh, that will exhibit uh, uh, interesting physical properties because of quantum confinements, because we go down to this uh, reduced dimensionality. So we have been studying the electronic properties there and try to find out uh, the energy band gap there in that small system, and that would be very different from what we know uh, in this uh, silicon bulk and also uh, some optical absorption problem because the, uh, the size is small, so you're going to have strong electron and hole interaction 
and that would shift your optical spectrum and would give you some surprises there. Another thing related to nanoscience is uh, some kind of very thin metal films on semiconductor surfaces uh, which would show uh, quantum confinement effect also and give uh, some kind of magic uh, thickness and when that will affect uh, the sp stability and electronic structure and also uh, the chemical properties of those films. Uh, so that's, again, we were using uh, supercomputers to carry out simulations and so that we could compare our results uh, with experimentalists and then so to get a better understanding of those materials. Recently, uh, we think we have uh, uh, some interesting results for this new dimensional materials, uh, so-called graphene, uh, carbon, uh, single carbon layer that uh, uh, is uh, viewed as a promising materials t for the next generation of electronic de devices. And we have fig figured out uh, some quasi-particle properties there. And, uh, and we think that uh, uh, this is, when we finish that study, we're probably going to uh, find a new type of quasi-particles. We, since we deal with the real materials, we uh, really want the numbers. That means it's, uh, instead of qualitative description, we want quantitative description of all the systems we study. Um, in that sense, we need the supercomputer to really help us getting those equations solved getting the calculations done, and then uh, give us very accurate answer after all the uh, theoretical efforts. Okay? Um, without that, and the, 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 uh, the, our results would not be that attractive because we really want to tell the experimental this, the band gap is 2.5 EV, instead of say, oh, it's somewhere between 1 and 3. Okay? Uh, so in that sense, uh, we really need to use supercomputer as a tool, and since those equations cannot be solved analytically. We have uh, to work with experimentalists closely because uh, um, the results generated from our simulations on the supercomputers will have to be compared with experimental uh, output. So for the uh, graphing project, we have a collaboration with our local experimental group in physics. Uh, we have a very strong team involving many faculty members. Uh, different characterization methods are applied to these new materials and also the, uh, uh, the growth of epitaxial graphene uh, is actually uh, pioneered by our uh, colleagues here in, the dis in this department. Um, for other uh, systems, I have collaborators uh, at different places, at national labs, at other universities. Uh, for theoretician, it, it's easier to switch projects because you don't have to set up your lab and you can jump from one material to another on the computer. So, uh, so for different uh, projects, uh, we normally will have a very different collaborators than just uh, different people working in the, uh, in the field. And that change, changes also. Maybe, maybe I should say that the, the, the best is yet to come. <laughs>